Our next inductee is an All-American golfer from the University of Houston. He led the Cougars to back-to-back -back NCAA championships in 84 and 85. He was a part of the 1982 national championship as well. He was the first Australian-born player to come to the United States and play golf collegiately. And then he continued his success on the professional tour winning the 1995 PGA Championship and a couple of players' championships among his 10 PGA Tour wins. Ladies and gentlemen, from the University of Houston, please welcome Steve Elkington. Okay, so you grow up down under. Nobody had ever come from Australia to play collegiate golf. How do you end up at the University of Houston? We had a great coach, Dave Williams, who was, uh, you know, very synonymous with, with winning. He won 16 national championships at University of Houston. He found me in, at, uh, in Australia, and he would call me every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. for a year and told me I was going to come to the University of Houston. We were going to win a national championship, and my roommate was going to be Billy Ray Brown. I thought he I thought he was crazy. Yeah, and did you did you take him seriously? When did you start to take that process seriously? Well, when I saw the pamphlet from the University of Houston that had all these great players, Bruce Litsky, you know, there was Bill Rogers, there was so many tour players that were at the University of Houston golfers that I'd already beat everybody in Australia when I was a young guy. So the next next natural move for me was to come over. And, and yet it had to be very hard to not only come, you know, to the United States, but you came to Texas, and then to, as a young 18-year-old kid to kind of try and get acclimated. How difficult was that? Well, we have two children in college now, and we, my wife and I, who's here, I met at the University of Houston as well, um, we moved them in to school with, like, truckloads of stuff. Right. I, I arrived at the University of Houston with a suitcase and a set of clubs. That's all I had. And as soon as I got there, I was put in a class, and um, a math class, and I did, we did uh, metrics in Australia. So I, I, you talk about being in a foreign, it was, might as well be speaking Japanese to me. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing, and I had no, no business being in that class. Yeah, it may have been English, but it didn't sound like it. Did it, it? Correct. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned your roommate, uh, future roommate. Coach was right. You were roommates with Billy Ray Brown. Um, first of all, tell the people who you, who you whose room you took over, the two of you? Well, we took over Jim Nance and Freddie Couples' room in 101 Tall. Billy Ray Brown and I were in, in that room for four years. We both met our wives um, at school, University of Houston, and um, uh, Nance used to always joke with us and say that uh, there was a lot of good-looking girls that Freddie, le Freddie left their name on the wall, you know, Freddie did. <laughs> of course, Nance didn't have any girlfriends, you know, but no. uh, he was too much of a nerd. Yeah, um, still is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that success, that program, 16 national championships, you mentioned it, arguably one of the most successful individual programs in Southwest Conference history. Do you realize that as you're a part of it? And what was it like to be a part of it? It was incredible being a part of it. University of Houston was, you know, I owe a lot to them. I tell people all the time that everything that happened great in my life happened at University of Houston. It was not unlike, it was not out of the normal to see Carl Lewis walking in our dorm every day. He was the fastest human on earth. Right. Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler were there at the same time. Billy Ray and I, we had all these rings that we had won. We'd let those guys come down and try them on, you know. <laughs> they told us, we told them the golfers had to win all the, all the championships so they could try them on. Drexler really used to get chapped about that. He couldn't get any of them on any finger. <laughs> His fingers were too yeah. big. Oh, that's classic. And then you go on to have 10 uh, PGA Tour victories, uh, and you won the PGA Championship. We saw a, co a couple of players' championships. I, I know it all started for you in at the University of Houston and in the Southwest Conference, but what was it like to have that kind of success out there on tour? It did indeed. America is a wonderful place. It's given me a great opportunity, particularly University of Houston. Um, as they say, I had a great run, and it all started at University of Houston. The Southwest Conference was so, um, I still find myself 
sort of pulling for the Southwest Conference as if we were still in it. It, it seems from a geographical standpoint that we were so much more organized, you know, and I mean, I would have really rather they kept it so I could take one more swing at Texas. I see they're not here today. Yeah. So we really enjoyed beating the Longhorns the most. That was our favorite deal of all. Of course it was, although we've got to mention that, uh, that you had the 84 and 85 national championships. You beat Oklahoma State for the title in both years, but I think it was 84. You beat them by one stroke. I had a putt. Um, I had to par the last hole to to win the national championship. I hit a good a good shot off the tee, and I hit a long iron to the green, and it finished up about a three footer to win the national championship. And um, somehow I got that one to go in. And apparently our coach was laying under the scoreboard with his hat over his head, waiting to hear if the cheers went up. And then he came out real heroic, saying that we would have made it anyway. So. <laughs> um, Coach Williams was an amazing man. A lot of people have tried to explain what he did at the University of Houston. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of great athletes in this, in this uh, room today, uh, but I think each one of them they have to do it themselves. You know, you can have great coaches all day long, uh, and they're very important to our sport, but the inner strength of the, of the player itself is what makes them get up here, I think. It's great, and it's an interesting dynamic in golf because it's an individual sport that you played as a team at the collegiate level. Yeah, that's correct. We uh, we had a you know we just had a great bunch of guys, and we wanted to win, and we we liked being up on top. Our son Sam is now at University of Houston, so it's it's a very important uh, it's very important to us, University of Houston. Is Sam playing golf? Yes, he oh, is. The legacy continues. <laughs> Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen, please say it one more time, Steve Thank Elkington. You.